So the next question is, where do we live? Right? <laughs> so this person is saying that I seem to be avoiding questions answering the city we live in. Well, it's no big deal really. Hey guys, what's up? What's up? How are you guys doing? My name is Tochi. If you're seeing me for the first time and you're welcome to my channel, please consider subscribing to my channel if you haven't and you won't regret it, okay? And to all my returning subscribers, you guys are wonderful. Thank you all for your support. I really appreciate it. So guys, today we are here to answer all your questions as regards buying a house in the UK. After we announced that we bought a house in the UK and we've done the step-by-step -step process of how to buy a house, we've even done um, how to get your credit score, we've done how we saved, we've done a couple of videos as regards that and there have been lots of questions right so today we are here to answer all your questions okay so this is going to be a QA and a video right answering specific questions from the comments okay because we don't want this video to be too long we're just going to pick some questions and answer in this video and maybe some other time next week we would answer the many questions okay if we decide to answer all the questions in this video it's going to be very long all right so we just take as much as possible as much as we can in this video okay so in case you don't answer your question in this video we're going to answer it in another video so we just pick out some questions some of them are repetition who we'll ask similar questions so we'll just pick the relevant ones and answer we hope you enjoyed this video i have my husband here and together we'll be answering all your questions so let's just get right into this video okay so the first question we have here is she's asking about your total earnings per annum multiplied by 4.5 what if the house is 400,000 pounds 10% comes to 40,000 pounds leaving a balance of 260,000 pounds if total earnings is around 70,000 pounds multiplied by 4.5 brings to 318,000 how does one pay the difference between 360 and 315,000 okay so uh Chioma, the answer to your question right is you have two options either you go for a house that is slightly cheaper so your combined income can afford the mortgage or you save up the remaining balance so like in our own case this was a factor for us as well i mean we would like to actually want a bigger house maybe a four bed with garage and everything but our affordability you know could not afford us that so uh, your two options is either you go for a house that is less than four hundred thousand within you know what you can afford which is 315,000 pounds or you save up the balance in your deposit nothing stops you from saving up more than 10 percent you can actually put down 20 percent of the value of the house i know someone that did that so you can either save up the balance or you go for a cheaper house i hope i answered your question okay so the next question is does your hobby mean permanent job he said full-time job but i think he meant a permanent job which can be a full-time or part-time because he mentioned agency job as well what i would say is i i mentioned full-time job i meant i meant actually a permanent contract now you can have a part-time job or a full-time job it's all up to you but the point is if you have a part-time job your annual income is going to be less so if you have a full-time job that pays let's say Ten thousand pounds a year. If you go part time, your income can come down to like twenty thousand pounds a year, and that is what the bank is going to use to calculate your affordability. So if you take up a part time job, it drops your affordability. This is to the best of my knowledge because if your job is part time and you end up earning let's say twenty or eighteen pounds, eighteen thousand pounds a year, your affordability works out with that amount of money. But if you have a, if it's a full time. And it comes up to like let's say thirty thousand pounds or twenty five thousand pounds. That's the figure they use to calculate your affordability. So it's up to you. But I'm not saying have a, a full time contract. If you want to make it part time, it's up to you. But bear in mind these things will count when your affordability is being calculated. That is how much you can afford to borrow for your mortgage. Sarah says, I mean, what kind of bank gives credit card to foreigners within two months? So Sarah, we've done a detailed video on credit card and credit score okay you can go and see it but any bank just answer your question any bank at all can give you credit card in the uk okay so the next question is from kiruka it's about credit card it's actually very long um she said well thanks for this video my question is about credit card i came to the uk months ago and went back in december and i was still denied so they said my credit score is not good no i don't know anyone so she's just talking about credit card because she was she applied and she was denied 
So, okay, we can, we've done a video, detailed video, okay, on credit card and credit score. So, you just see it. We'll leave the link in the description box. So, so the next question is from Lucky Joko. He's asking, can you buy a property from your savings? Yeah, the simple answer is yes, you can. <laughs> so, the next question is from Sophia. She says, thanks for sharing. How did you find a developer? Uh, it's very simple. Anywhere you are, I'm sure there'll be developers around you. And if you can't find any, just go online and search new builds around me. I'm sure you'll get, you get results. So that's the very simple way of finding developers around you. If you can't see anyone physically, then go online, just Google new developments near me. And Google will bring up different developments that are close to your location. And you can go and check them out. So the next question is from Joy. She's saying, can a student buy a house too? Um, so Joy, I think we're going to make a separate video on this because it needs like a detailed explanation. But you can just say something, Joy. Um, what, what, what I would say is as a student, right, it's going to be difficult. Don't get me wrong, if you are if you're a resident of the UK or a citizen, it's a different situation. But if you are an international student, it becomes a bit more complicated, right? So I don't want to say yes or no, all right? But like she said, I think we'll explain that in much detail in maybe a slightly longer video so that any student who wants an answer to this question will sort of like understand our explanation about it. Okay, so the next question is from Olomachi. She's saying, can someone coming as a student get a credit card? Yeah, as soon as he or she arrives in the UK. Um, a student getting a credit card, again, like I said, it's, it's slightly complicated for an international student because you don't really have a permanent job. You are supposed to be a full-time student and if you wish, a part-time worker. All right, so giving you credit card, especially if you're your first time in the UK, it's going to be difficult um i doubt i doubt except you have a full-time job that can prove you have income but then i'm not saying it's impossible but again we're going to answer all this thing in detail but we talk about how students how getting the house for students and things like that okay so the next question is from cm she's saying thank you guys i was wondering how can foreigners buy houses if they're on a work visa we are we for example we are on a work visa so if you're on a work visa yeah. you can so for buy those a house asking that question the visa we are on, we are on a work visa yeah okay. so you can buy a house with a work visa why not it's very possible yeah it's very possible of course this is our house and we have so many friends as well who are homeowners in the uk yeah so it's Possible. And we want to just add that, to be honest, what we did is not really, really too special. I mean, many people did it before us and doing it after us as well, in the time we did it. Okay, maybe we are the ones coming out to share our story, but it's not, it's not, it's not impossible. So the next question is, where do we live? Right? <laughs> so this person is saying that I seem to be avoiding questions answering the city we live in. Well, it's no big deal, really. Yeah, you live in crew in Cheshire, if you know where that is, don't know where to just Google it, in England. Um, so that's where we live. Okay, so this next question is from Ola Jumoke, and she's saying, my question is, the mortgage will spread over how many months or years? And if you don't mind, where are you based? Okay, we've answered where we're based in the UK. We, over how many years? The amount of years you get on your mortgage depends on your age. Okay, and you can also reduce it. So the maximum you can get spread your mortgage over is 35 years. We were offered um, around that, but we brought our own down to 27 years. It's our choice. You can do 30, 25, you can even do 10 years. You can even do 15 years, it's your choice. But remember, the less number of years you repay your mortgage, the more you pay every month. So it's up to you to spread it for a longer period of time. You pay less every month, but you pay more interest at the end of the day. If you pay for a short period of time, you pay more every month, but you pay less interest. So check your circumstance, check how much you can afford to pay every month, and tailor your mortgage agreement to the number of years you want. The bank is going to ask you. However, there's going to be a maximum limit based on your age. For example, if you're 40 years old, you can't do more than 25 years because they want to, they want to stop paying your mortgage by the time you're 60 or 65. I'm not sure the exact year. So please double check with your bank and mortgage advisor. So from the, how old you are, or the oldest person if it's a joint mortgage, they will add the years to when you're 62 years old. So if you want to reduce it, you know, to 20 or to 10, it's up to you. Maybe 62 or 65 years old, I'm not sure. But ask your mortgage advisor and ask your bank. Our own is for 27 years. It's our choice. We could have done more, but we reduce it to 27 years. So the next question is from Odinda Mola. 
she's asking or it's asking does this amount to be paid to solicitor determined by the cost of the property okay so Oh, you know, thank you. And she said, Let's go, guys. Route to 15k. So you're already 15k now. Yes, already 15k. So thank you. Yeah, uh, thanks. The amount you pay your solicitor for his services, his or her services, is not determined by the value of the property. They will tell you how much they charge. It doesn't matter if your house is 1 million or 200,000 pounds. They'll tell you how much they charge. Okay. But what can affect how much you pay your solicitor are if you're taking a joint mortgage. Because you're two individuals, they'll do two checks on two different persons, so there'll be a, a bit of an extra fee on it. Secondly, if you're using a lifetime ISA, which we use, like we explained in our video, they'll incur some fees for making the transaction for your lifetime ISA. So these two things, to the best of my knowledge, are things that can affect how much the solicitor is going to charge you. I don't know of any other thing. So discuss your solicitor and know what they charge. Do both partners build their credit score or just one of you? Yeah, so we've answered that question in our credit score video. Like we made a detailed video on using your credit score in the UK. So you can, I'm sure you have seen that video. So that question has been answered. Okay. So yes, both partners have to build their credit score. Okay. Jamil is asking, what's the value of this house? Okay, Jamil. Again, when we bought our house, is not what you're going to buy your this particular house if you want to buy it today. Okay. Those that bought before us bought less than us. Those that bought after us bought more than we paid. In the same development, in fact, opposite us. All right. So, the price of house changes. It goes up and it goes down. So, the value of this house is one ninety-five thousand pounds. But you just need to check your own area where you want to buy, the kind of house you want to buy, and see the price. And you can also put in an offer. You can negotiate the cost of your the price you pay for your house. So. There's no particular amount they sell house for in the UK. There's just a range. So what you buy at your own time may not be what your neighbor is going to buy. Yeah. All right. This is not a full house. Do I also get to buy a room only? Uh, I'm sorry, I don't really know. I mean, you can't just go and buy a room in a house. Maybe you can buy an apartment that has a flat in a block of flats. But buying a room, maybe you can buy a room in a, in a flat. I don't know. Just you have to check. You have to check. Yeah. How do you know about buying? House. So does buying a house in the UK make getting your permanent residency setting? We don't know because we don't have one yet, but we'll find out when we get to that stage. Yeah. How can an international student navigate his way to buying a house? I'm just curious. Oh, we are going to make a separate video, okay? Just for students and how to go about buying a house in the UK. Alright? The next question, how much do you guys now pay monthly after the deposit? Second question similar, how much should you pay in mortgage monthly to the bank? Yeah, so we pay £530, but remember that whatever we pay um, will not apply to what you pay as well. So all these things just depends on your circumstances, okay? But just for you to know, we pay £530 every month just for the first five years. After that, it's going to increase. What we pay every month depends on the length of the mortgage, how much you borrow and the interest rate the bank gives you. Initially, we we're going to pay less, but we reduce the length of the mortgage and what we're going to pay every month increased. And after our first five years, you can always remortgage. That's a different discussion entirely. You can always remortgage, get a new deal, and change how much you pay. So basically, it's, these things vary and change, all right? So it depends on your personal circumstance. So when you get your own mortgage, you get all this information for yourself. The next question I will appreciate if you can mention the part of UK where you settled for. We've answered that in this video. I'm looking at the Midlands. Would you advise a cheaper area based on your developer price? Thanks. Please check out KK. What I would say is any part of UK you want to settle in, go on right move. You can compare the price of houses, the type of house you want in that area. We cannot really say go here, don't go here. I mean, Debbie is okay. It's not really an expensive place that much. So if you want to go there, it's still fine. Again, depends on how much you can afford. All right. But always check right move or Zoopla or on the market for how to find out the cost of house in any area of the UK you want to live in. Yeah. Did you get the mortgage first, then look for a property? Or in your case, approach a developer? Or did you save your deposit, then approach a developer from there, apply for a mortgage? Okay, we already explained the timeline of how we did our own. For us, we start saving first when we raise like 70% of our deposits, all right? We went to look for a property that is a developer. When we found a developer and we sort of had a conversation, then we went to apply for a mortgage. 
all right so i would say save your deposit first okay when you do that then start looking at the cost of houses in your area you can do that online you don't have to do it physically you can do it online when you see how much house you want to buy you can then approach a bank or through a mortgage advisor apply for your mortgage so the next question is from mcdonald and he's asking um will you advise an older couple to go for new build or an old build because it's assumed that new build costs more and then she's saying secondly what are the criteria for qualifying for help to buy skin thanks i'm looking forward to your response okay as per if you want to buy a new or old build, it depends on your choice it depends on the price of the houses it depends on what you want we went for a new build for several reasons okay we wanted a new house if you are okay with an old build, why not is your choice we will not say one is better than the other each of them has their advantage and their disadvantages so it's your choice our opinion we can't say we went for a new house maybe our next house may not be a new house we're not sure but it's up to you um the, for help to buy skin that's a long conversation but as long as you're a first-time buyer and it's a house you're going to live in and the price of the house is not more than the price capped for help to buy in the region of england you live in okay different regions of england have different price caps for help to buy houses and it has to be a brand new house you cannot buy an old house with help to buy and it has to be your first house and it must be within the price cap of your region so check what region of england you are in and find out the price cap and that will guide you yeah i think we'll make a detailed video on help to buy because we have a lot to talk about right okay that's fine that's yeah. fine thank you so guys we're going to make a detailed video on help to buy okay so expect the video could you please recommend a mortgage advisor who wouldn't charge beside what the lender already pays them you can always look online in your area for mortgage advisors okay just go through them and ask them if they charge or not uh, if you want our own particular mortgage advisor um we are working on something around that all right we'll communicate to you guys a bit later we have been careful with the information we give out because we don't, we don't want to say things that will put us you know in a situation all right so so just relax all right subsequently we're going to give you all that information you can always look in your region and find a close mortgage advisor okay and they usually do not collect money yeah this person is asking when did the mortgage began at begin i'm sure she meant that was it after the exchange of contract or after the house keys was given to you or started immediately okay who former the mortgage starts counting the day the bank releases the money and the bank will only release the money when the house has been completed that is when you have been given the key all right our own was released a day before we're giving the key and it was completed the day we were given the keys. So our mortgage stay counting from the day we got our keys. It is not after your exchange contracts. We exchange contracts almost three months or four months before we moved into our house. Okay, so it didn't start counting then. It stay counting the day we got our keys. Is there a way to vet the solicitors? Paying money to someone not seen might be hard, isn't it? Okay, crypt. Well, if you approach your solicitor and you are not convinced you can go to their office for our solicitor we had their office address we could have just driven there and seen them physically but if you are not confident or you you're not sure you're concerned about payment or you've not seen kindly ask them for their address and go to their office is that simple okay please if there is no land how do the banks send a surveyor to value a house that's non-existent Okay, Shagun, thank you. I think what the banks use is they'll survey the land to be sure it's not maybe swamped or anything is safe to build the house. They'll probably look at the plan, the type of house you're buying, and maybe compare it to the price of house in that area. I don't know the details of how they do the survey, but they told us they did it. I don't know the intricacies, but they told us they did it. So it's best to just trust your bank anyways, because they're going to be borrowing you the money so they will decide the terms of the loan so i don't know how to do it for a house has not been built but they did it okay this question is please do solicitors handle the help to buy government 20 percent or you have to apply for it yourself for the government help to buy 20 percent your mortgage advisor can actually apply for it on your behalf or you can apply yourself okay but in our case the mortgage advisor applied for us so we're still going to come back and talk about help to buy scheme separately but the mortgage advisor can actually apply on your behalf not your solicitor your mortgage advisor 
Okay. Stella B is how asking the name of the bank. Is Barclays Bank. I think we've covered questions from the first three videos. You know, so the next question we're going to pick is going to be from how we saved, and then from the credit score video, and then any other question that you have to leave for us in the comment section. Okay, we don't want this video to be too long, so we're just going to end here. And the baby's actually disturbing as well, right? So let's just end this video here and We'll see you guys in our next video okay so thank you so much guys for watching this video please give it a thumbs up if you liked it subscribe to my channel if you haven't right it's very free and it's very easy share this video so everyone can benefit from it as well follow me on social media all my handles are in the description box and i'll see you guys in my next video Bye bye